All right, going to get started here in just a few minutes. Thanks to those of you for just joining in. Um, uh, gonna get started here in about one minute. Let us know where you're watching from though uh, by writing it in the comments section. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, this morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Pat Kane. Uh, work at the Museum of the Grand Prairie. And thanks to all of you out there for joining us for another Museum Monday. Today's theme is cars and trucks and things that go. Um, another Monday in the summer uh, here at the Museum of the Grand Prairie. And we love these Museum Monday programs and we hope that you are enjoying them as well, whether you're watching live or you're watching this recorded. Um, let us know where you're watching from uh, down in the comment section below. Uh, it's always cool to see where folks are watching from this morning. Um, I'm streaming live from my apartment um, in Champaign, Illinois, uh, right here in Champaign County. Uh, uh, Corey is watching from Lincoln, Illinois. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Corey. Uh, also, the rest of you out there, let us know where you are watching from down below. Also, feel free to ask us any questions uh, you may have uh, down in the comment section if you have any comments um, as well. I'll put those down below. It makes it a lot more fun for you and for me when you ask questions. Uh, we have a nice little back and forth, nice little conversation this morning. Um, uh, so please feel free to do so. If you have any questions at all, whether it's about the program or anything else, put those questions down in the comments section. 
Uh, Museum Mondays are programs for uh, museum fans of all ages. Uh, so, you know, tell your parents, tell your kids, tell your brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, uh, friends. Uh, these programs are designed for museum fans of all ages. Um, and we're going to get into a whole bunch of fun activities today over the course of the next 25 minutes or so. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in. As I said, today's theme is cars and trucks and things that go. We're going to talk about cars, trucks, anything else with wheels, things without wheels that also go, that fly through the air, um, coast through the sea, um, other vehicles that go on land. We're talking all about things that move, things that move us human beings. That's what we're going to talk about in today's Museum Mondays program. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, I'm going to do a whole bunch of uh, sharing my screen. So I'm going to um, uh, share my screen. Uh, look at some awesome photos, some videos, uh, and a whole bunch of other cool things as we go along today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And I'm going to open this up. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into today's program. So as I said, my name is Pat Kane, work at the Museum of the Grand Prairie, part of the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. Here is the front of our museum. Maybe you've been there, maybe you haven't. Let us know if you've been there before. Um, uh, by putting it down in the comment section. Uh, would love to welcome you back here in the near future. Um, we are opening up the museum on a limited basis uh, beginning on Wednesday, July 8th. We're going to be open Wednesdays through Fridays. going to start a little trial phase, start nice and slow, uh, but you do have to register to visit the museum. So check out our Facebook page or our website for more information on how to register to visit once we reopen for the first time in months. Um, uh, so check that out. Um, where we will reopen here again on July 8th. As I mentioned before, we're part of the Champaign County Forest Preserve District. We are located at Lake of the Woods Forest Preserve in Muhammad, Illinois. Okay, so what are we going to be doing today? Uh, before this program is over, you will have the opportunity to answer these questions. We're not going to answer them just yet, but I like to start off by asking questions and letting you know that we're going to answer these over the course of today's program and our activities today. So question one, when was the first gas powered car invented? That's the first question. Maybe take a guess down in the comment section below. When do you think the first gas powered car was invented? So feel free to answer any of my questions down in the comments below. Or if you can't make a comment, you know, if you're just a kid out there watching, feel free to shout at the screen. Shout at the screen your guess. When was the first gas powered car invented? Uh, number two, what are some common types of cars, trucks, and other forms of transportation? We're going to look at a whole bunch of types of cars, trucks, planes, trains, boats, all that sort of thing. How do people get around? What vehicles do they use? We're going to look at some common types of transportation. Uh, what kinds of artifacts do we have here at the museum related to cars and trucks and things that go? So among the museum's 26,000 objects, photos, document records, um, uh, Doc, uh, archival material, oral histories. We have a whole bunch of stuff related to cars and trucks and things that go. And I pulled out a small handful of things to show you from our museum's collection. Um, and I'll show that to you before the program's over. And lastly, what activities can you do at home to explore vehicles? I'm gonna show you some, uh, some awesome virtual tours of some really famous vehicles. Um, uh, so you can, uh, you know, uh, Touch a Truck. There's a popular Touch a Truck events that happen in the summertime. Normally for this Museum Mondays program, we have a lot of local folks, um, uh, local police department, fire department, uh, towing companies and other vehicles come out so we can have a Touch a Truck event. But unfortunately we can't do that in person this summer because of the COVID-19 situation. But you can still virtually touch a truck and I'll show you some awesome activities that you can do to do that. As well as a craft, a craft that you can do at home with maybe those mini toilet paper rolls that you may have at your house, um, and some other activities, some, some fun games associated with cars that require little to no technology or supplies. Okay, so when was the first gas-powered car invented? You may have had a guess, but the first gas-powered car was actually invented by Carl Benz of Germany. That Benz name may sound familiar to you if you're a car fan out there because of the popular Mercedes-Benz vehicles. Um, and Carl Benz, uh, the Benz part of that Mercedes-Benz uh, famous line of vehicles, invented the first gas-powered vehicle in 1885. Here's a picture of this three-wheeled vehicle. 
what it looked like in 1885, this first gas powered mode of transportation way that people got around invented over a hundred years ago. And it had a top speed of, get this, a top speed of 10 miles per hour. So you could probably, some of you out there may even be able to outrun this first gas powered vehicle. Maybe even on your bike, you could pedal faster than this first gas powered vehicle. But this is where gas powered cars started. It had to start somewhere. And this was the first gas powered vehicle. And of course we have come a long way as humans in developing gas powered vehicles because now we have tons of types of cars, trucks, and things that go. There's a couple, here's four different types um, of cars. Got a gray, you know, SUV, got a red car, got a yellow car and a green car. These cars go much faster than 10 miles per hour now. Um, uh, uh, you know, we've, as I said, we've come a long, long way in terms of cars, and trucks, and things that go technology. What other types of cars and trucks and things that go are out there, what are some common types? You know, I could have found a whole bunch of different types of vehicles, um, uh, but I focused on a handful. So there's different types of cars. Um, you know, cars come in different sizes, colors, uh, names, even, you know, what they're used for. Here's a police car, Champaign police car, of local police department. Uh, you know, cars are used by police departments. Uh, there's, of course, trucks out there. Here's this big blue truck. You know, trucks have, you know, usually a little bit bigger, have a bed in the back where you can carry stuff. But there's also different types of trucks. Here is um, a fire truck from local fire department, Urbana Fire Department. There is a fire truck, you know, of course, helping put out fires, rescue people uh, when, they're in, when they are in some emergency situations. Here's a big old fire truck from Urbana Fire Department. Uh, there's also tow trucks. Uh, here's a huge tow truck. Look at all those wheels on this tow truck right here. I count one, two, three, four, five, six wheels that I can see. How many wheels do you think are on this tow truck? There's tons of wheels, but this is a big old tow truck. I think used to tow uh, big semi trucks, you know, those big trucks that drive down the highway um, with the trailers behind them. If it, if it breaks down on the side of the road, this big old tow truck from Reynolds Towing, a local towing company that usually helps us out for our cut to truck program. Um, uh, this is a big tow truck that they use. Also dump trucks, you know, uh, lots of vehicles used on a construction site to build buildings and other things. Check out the size of this dump truck. You can also see that there's a woman standing with her hands above her head. You know, I would say she's probably reaching uh, you know, maybe seven to eight feet in the air, and that tire for that dump truck still, you know, skies over her head. It's almost as tall as two of her, just the tires on this dump truck. So uh, different types of trucks, um, even on a construction site as well. Um, uh, I heard this uh, truck coming around this morning um, when I was taking our dog for a walk. Uh, there's garbage trucks and recycling trucks, like this one I'm recycling truck here you know, trucks used to uh, take our, our garbage and recycling to and from um, our homes uh, out to recycling centers or landfills or this and that. So trucks, a whole bunch of different types of trucks, whole bunch of different types of uses that humans have thought of uh, to transport a number of things. There's of course the bicycle, you know, getting back to the original two wheels uh, you know, these things get you around. Maybe you've got a bike of your own at home that you use to get to and from or riding around the neighborhood with your friends or your family. Another two-wheeled vehicle is a motorcycle. Got a motor attached to two wheels to get you to and from wherever you're going. See a lot of motorcycles in the summer uh, now that it's warming up too. Uh, another type of vehicle flies through the sky is a plane. Here we got a little small personal jet uh, for somebody who makes a lot, a lot of money. Um, so planes take us to and from in the sky. Might see some flying through the sky. There's, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of different types of planes as well. Here's a fighter jet um, used in the military. Uh, goes really, really fast. Um, this plane uh, has propellers on its side. And this plane can also go from air and not just land on, uh, you know, flat 
flat ground, but this one lands on water. Check this out, this plane lands on water. So some vehicles uh, you know, can go into different types of spaces by land, by air, by sea. Um, here's probably planes, if you've ever um, um, you know, been in a plane to go on vacation or something or to go visit some family or friends elsewhere, these are these big commercial planes. You got some United Airlines and Virgin America planes that transport uh, people from airports all across the world to wherever they want to go. Of course, there's trains. Trains brought um, uh, in the middle of the 1800s, trains brought a whole bunch of people, thousands of people to the Champaign County and East Central Illinois area uh, to um, uh, eventually settle create permanent settlements of the towns that we have in this area. Trains were a big part of that. Once the railroad came to town, so did a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of supplies, changed everything. The railroad changed um, the United States in a whole bunch of ways, very, very impactful when the railroad came to town. And there's even trains today. This is a bullet train, I believe from Asia, uh, goes very, very fast, uh, much faster than maybe this steam powered train that I just showed you um, could go. It gets people uh, to and from one space to another very, very quickly. Of course, there's boats. You know, you can travel by water. Um, uh, that is one way that humans traveled for a long, long time before we had gas powered vehicles or trains or planes or anything like that, you know, using sailboats uh, to travel across the ocean, uh, using some boats to travel down rivers, uh, travel across really large lakes, boats, where our primary mode of transportation, traveling by boat and water, was uh, the way that humans got around for a long, long time prior to, you know, 1885 when that first gas powered vehicle was invented by Carl Benz that I mentioned earlier. So, got around by water for a long, long time. Uh, and so, I showed, you know, I wanted to highlight a couple different types of boats. This boat here uh, has a motor attached to the back end on the far right that allows it to go really, really fast. You know, people can have fun on these in the summertime. Maybe you have a boat or your family has a boat or you've been on a boat like this where you can you know, go play out in the lake, go inner tubing or water skiing or wakeboarding, uh, have a whole bunch of fun. This one goes pretty, pretty fast, but it's powered by a motor. Uh, this one here, we can see these two guys, they're in this canoe. Looks like they may be paddling you know, through a lake or a pond. Maybe this is even some small river, um, uh, but uh, canoes, um, most canoes don't have a motor attached to them. You gotta use these oars like these guys are using to get them to and from wherever they want to go. And of course, boats come in all different shapes and sizes. That canoe that we just saw only held two people. This is a cruise ship. This cruise ship, maybe you've been on a cruise before. Uh, cruises, uh, cruise ships can hold thousands of people, uh, have a number of different activities where people spend you know, a couple days, uh, you know, maybe a whole week on a cruise ship, uh, maybe on vacation or something. And sometimes even larger, are these huge boats used by the military. These are called aircraft carriers because they carry aircraft. As you can see on the top of this boat, there's a ton of planes and helicopters that will take off and land right here on this boat as it's traveling across the sea. Uh, so these are huge, huge boats where we have thousands of military members, soldiers operating this huge vehicle across the water. And I could have picked a num I could have picked a whole bunch of other types of vehicles, but uh, you know, the, I, I just picked these dozen or so vehicles, some popular modes of transportation that people use to get around by land, by air, by sea that we see in 2020. Also wanted to show you uh, different kinds different kinds of vehicle related artifacts that we have at our museum at the Museum of the Grand Prairie. As I mentioned before, we've got over 26,000 objects, photos. Um, uh, uh, archival material, documents, oral histories at our museum within our collection. And I did a quick search through our museum's database to see uh, if we could find anything related to cars, trucks, planes, and boats. Uh, so I typed in the word car and this popped up. Uh, this is a toy car uh, that came from one of our museum's collections. Uh, this toy car is made of tin, made of metal, uh, believed to be from the 1920s, 1940s. Maybe you have some toy cars at home, but this one is, you know, almost uh, 100 years old, if not 100 years old. Uh, I thought th I thought this was pretty cool. Um, I like to look at old advertisements um, uh, to get a glimpse into the past. 
This is a Ford advertisement for what looks like a Ford Thunderbird from 1955. Uh, this was on the back of a Time magazine, popular magazine, um, still being produced today. Uh, but uh, this is advertising 1955 Ford. These classic advertisements are really cool to look at, I think. Um, and this is just one of them that I picked out. This is a license plate. Uh, cars, in order to ride on the road legally, got to identify your car by having a license plate. This is a license plate from, as you can see on the right with the red letters, the letters 1-3. This is a license plate from the year 1913 in Illinois. And one thing you may be able to identify about this license plate that's a little bit different from the license plate that may be on your family's car or your car um, is it has uh, holes in it. It's cut out. 65818 is cut out in this square. Why do you think this license plate has some holes in it in between the numbers 65818 and that 13 on the side? Why would somebody want to cut out? these letters, this license plate looks a little bit different than license plates we have on our cars today. Yeah, well, the license plate has uh, these cutouts, so air can travel between these letters and numbers, um, you know, so you're not, uh, since cars didn't go so fast, as I mentioned um, at, towards the beginning of the program, when vehicles were first in, invented, the first gas-powered vehicle um, uh, was invented in 1885, only went 10 miles an hour. Well, anything that got in the way, maybe, uh, you know, uh, license plates or any anything that may drag um, the speed of the vehicle down, such as a flat license plate catching a whole bunch of wind, may cause it to go a little slower. So this actually allowed air to pass through the license plate uh, so the car could go a little bit quicker, maybe even cooling down uh, the engine so a breeze could be felt through the license plate. Here's a, here's a photo from our Cheesebro collection, Cheesebro family, um, part of the, the, the collection that helped make our blacksmithing on the prairie exhibit that we've had at the museum for a long, long time. They're standing here with a guitar, looks like a fiddle or a violin, four family members, and one dog there in the middle outside of their family car. I believe this photo was taken in 1930. Uh, Cheesebro family um, from Livingston County or Sonoman, Illinois, just a little bit north of where we are in Champaign County. Uh, so I typed in the word plane in our museum's database and found this model toy plane here. It looks like it's got a little motor towards the top. Uh, it says something down at the bottom, it says Carl's Planes. Maybe Carl was the owner of this toy collection and had this model toy airplane. This toy plane made a metal um, motor and a propeller at the front. Um, and I believe this toy plane is from uh, right around the 1940s, 19, 1920 to 1940s. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, I wanted to highlight uh, some pretty cool photos in the museum's collection, part of the Doris K. Wiley Hoskins archive for cultural diversity. Um, I chose a handful of photos of the 99th Pursuit Squadron, um, which uh, was uh, trained at Shunit Air Force Base, eventually, you know, becoming the famed Tuskegee Airmen, the first all-black uh, fighter squadron in the United States military in the United States Air Force. Very, very um, important group of individuals breaking some barriers in the middle of the 1900s. I believe this photo is from 1941 from their time training most likely at Shunit Air Force Base, this photo is from, of these African-American soldiers training to become the first all-black fighter squadron in the United States. Here's another photo of a man outside of a plane, uh, probably gonna go fly in that plane, learn, learn how to fly it, get trained. Again, at Shunit Air Force Base, right here in Champaign County, uh, this training base for the United States Air Force located in Rantoul um, uh, from the early 1900s up until 1994. In Rain School. Here's a larger picture of the 99th Pursuit Squadron. Again, the famed Tuskegee Airmen, the first all black fighter squadron of the United States Air Force. These great photos. I love these photos from the Hoskins collection. One last thing a uh, nice watercolor painting, again from the Cheesebro collection, painted by Catherine Kaiser, um, also part of the Cheesebro family, um, of some people in a boat. 
paddling across the sea, the lake, a river, with a, a small bit of sunshine up there in the top right, traveling by boat. So I just picked out a handful of things from our collection to show you, but I wanted to show those to you um, related to cars and trucks and things that go. Okay, so what could you do at home? Fun activities that you could do at home? Well, I pulled out a handful of things. So one thing you can do is explore other vehicles across the world in your own touch a truck event at home. As I mentioned before, uh, normally when we do this program, we have our own touch a truck event where we have uh, police cars, fire trucks, tow trucks, other types of vehicles out there um, that we allow visitors all ages to come and explore. But again, we can't do that this year because we can't do in-person programs. But here's a virtual touch a truck activity that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, just a quick video to learn about a fire truck. What's What's all in my Hey guys, uh, awesome. my name's engineer Eric Morris. Today we're out here at Cedar Park Station 5. I'm going to show you Cedar Park Quint 5 and some of the functions it can do today. Quint means it has water tank, hose, ground ladder, aerial ladder, and a water pump. And we're going to show you how some of those work today. What makes a Quint a Quint is the fact that it's pretty much a fire engine with a ladder on it. So this is the fire engine. So you can explore all different types of this fire truck. This is a really great video. We're cutting a hole in the roof. Department. This saw right here is going to be a metal cutting saw. Then to get into fires, pretty much um, wildland fires, brush fires. This truck has the capability of going off road. Also, unlike the bigger fire truck. So again, this is a really great short video if you're interested in you know, having your own virtual touch a truck event at your house from this fire department um, where they show you the ins and outs of their fire trucks, uh, what sort of tools they may have right there in their own fire department. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you, you know, you could do a virtual tour of a pretty famous uh, vehicle that got people to and fro, the Titanic, the, the Titanic shipwreck. Um, from the early 1900s, carrying a whole bunch of people that sank in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. There's a whole bunch of cool virtual activities around that wreck. And here's one video of the shipwreck at the bottom of the ocean uh, with some cool video and some narration as well. In their workshop in Dudley, England, the anchors were transported to Belfast by horse, train and ship before being installed. It took three years to construct Titanic, but by the 2nd of April 1912, Titanic was completed and taken out to the Irish Sea for her trials. She was certified as seaworthy by the British Board of Trade and ready for her maiden voyage. She would be servicing the transatlantic route, a journey from Southampton, England, to New York, and told Cotton to let Titanic know they were on their way. So you can explore He's this virtual shipwreck Got a truck? Get decked and up your game. Of the Titanic. Um, and one thing I'll do also is I'll share these links uh, at the end of this video uh, down in the comment section below of these, uh, these activities, these virtual tours that you can do of these vehicles. Here's another cool thing I found. Um, this is a timeline, an interactive timeline showing you uh, what it took to build this massive boat, the Titanic, in the early 1900s. timeline showing the building of the Titanic us uh, from National Geographic. Again, I'm going to post these links at the, in the comment section um, after uh, the program. Another cool thing, another vehicle you can virtually explore Car story. is the Batmobile. There's a couple different types of Batmobiles at the Volo Auto Museum in Volo, Illinois. Uh, looks like a pretty cool museum that I had never heard of um, until exploring, uh, doing research to put 
this program together. We've got a whole bunch of different types of cars and exhibits, including two Batmobiles. This one from 1966, as well as a uh, more recent Batmobile um, from some of the other Batman movies uh, that have been uh, made in recent years. I'm Lou. I'm here with Brian Grams. Brian is the, is the director of the Volo Auto Museum, family owned and operated museum. Come on out to Volo, Illinois if you haven't in your car family. This is a fantastic place. And we're here with one of the number one attractions. My personal favorite, only four channels on TV when I was four and a half years old. In 1966, people stopped doing what they were doing to see the Batmobile. This is a George Garris custom Batmobile creation. So this all right, we'll even get a dead straight on look. See, and it's a pretty long car, so it's kids don't try this move at home. <laughs> Ready to move out. So again, check out the Volo Auto Museum on YouTube to explore this Batmobile, uh, other Batmobile that they have. Um, at their collection, at their museum, um, for some really cool stuff. Uh, another activity you can do, you know, maybe you want to make a car of your own. Maybe you have a whole bunch of toilet paper rolls at your house. Here's a really simple craft activity to make some toilet paper roll race cars, for your very own, uh, with just a few simple uh, craft materials. As I mentioned, toilet paper rolls, maybe some construction paper, some markers or paint, um, and make this really cool craft. car at home out of some toilet paper rolls and some simple art materials. Um, again, I'll post all of these links down in the comments section below after uh, the program is finished. So what else could you do at home? Well, one thing that my brother and I did when we passed the time as kids, we did a lot of uh, games associated with cars. Um, you know, sometimes we would just sit out on our front porch. We lived by a busy street. Um, in Rainsville, Illinois, and we would play games with the cars that drove by. So maybe you can play some games looking for cars at your own house. Sit on your own front porch or in your front yard, um, or maybe just driving down the road uh, while you're passing the time, going on a trip or something, um, and play some of these games. Uh, one thing that we would do is uh, try to count how many types of cars you see drive by your house. So, you know, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, do you see cars, do you see trucks, do you see police cars, do uh, you see a fire truck, do you see garbage trucks, construction trucks, um, you know, a whole bunch of different types of vehicles could drive by your house in any given day. So count how many types of cars or vehicles you see drive by your house just in a short period of time. Another thing my brother and I would do is we play a game where we would each pick a color say i would pick the color white and my brother would pick the color red and then what we would do is we would see how fast we could count 10 cars of that color as they drove by our house every time i saw a white car i would count that car every time my brother saw a red car he would count that car and then the first one to get 10 cars of their color driving past their house would win the game so try that out you know maybe when you're um, uh, bored, you know, sitting outside, 
um, or just traveling down the road, pick a color of a car, see how fast you can count 10 cars of that color as they drive by. All right, so just a little review here at the end of the program. Got a couple of questions for you, seeing if you were paying attention. Uh, question number one, how fast did the first gas-powered car go? I mentioned that the first gas-powered vehicle was invented in Germany by Carl Benz in 1885. How fast did that first gas-powered car go? That's right, that first gas-powered car only went 10 miles an hour, 10 miles per hour that first gas-powered car went. Question two, name one type of vehicle we looked at today. Looked at a whole bunch of different types of vehicles. Name one. Yeah, so we looked at cars, police car, trucks, fire truck, tow truck, dump truck, garbage trucks. We looked at planes, fighter jets, commercial airliners, trains, bicycles, motorcycles, uh, boats, uh, aircraft carriers, cruise ships, canoe, um, and there's a whole bunch of different vehicles that we didn't even discuss, but name one type of vehicle we looked at today. That's what we talked about during today's program. Last one, what is one activity you can do at home that we talked about today? Yeah, so uh, uh, apologies, uh, my dog's barking in the background, Penny, but one activity you can do at home that we talked about today, you know, you can look at those virtual tours of those cars, virtual touch truck of the fire truck, uh, virtual exploration of the shipwreck of the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, you could check out uh, Volo Auto Museum where they explore the Batmobile. Um, you can make your own toilet paper race car or even play some games, count some cars as they drive by your house. A lot you can do at your very own house associated with cars and trucks and things that go. That's the end of the program. Uh, I want to thank you for watching, whether you were watching live or you're watching this recorded version. I want to encourage you to continue to follow us on Facebook. Also find us on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for much more digital content. And um, feel free to visit us when we reopen. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, the museum is going to be opening on Wednesday, July 8th where we will be open Wednesday through Friday on a limited basis. And uh, you must register to visit the museum prior to coming. So check out our Facebook page and our website to learn how you can register um, and uh, what you need to do in order to visit the Museum of the Grand Prairie. Again, my name is Pat Kane. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Hope you learned a thing or two, had some fun, and we'll see you next Monday for another Museum Mondays program. Until next time.